Hey guys, this is Ms. Nelson. And Ms. Hall. And today you guys are going to be doing notes over comparing dot to dot plots or box to box plots. So we've gone over each type of box plot. Um, and then we've also gone over dot plots. And so now we're going to show you how to compare them once we know how to find um, specific pieces of information from them. So example one says Avery rolled one die 15 times and recorded her results. She then rolled another die another 15 times and recorded her results a second time. The first and second sets of data are shown below. So we see our first set that has one through four. We see our second set that has one through six, many of them repeating. Okay, so underneath here are your two dot plots. So if we look at this, question number one says, what are the means of the two sets of data? So remember, a mean is another word for the average. Okay, so I'm going to start and I'm going to create a list of the first set and then the second set and then I'm going to tell you what the two means are. So I have two ones, three, four, five, six twos, I have four threes, so I'm going to group that, I'm going to say that that's 12, and I have three fours, which is another 12, so you're going to see me combine over here real quickly to add two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I know 12 times 3 is 36, plus 2 is 38. So my total is 38, so I'm going to divide by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and divide by 15. 15 goes into 38 twice, which is 30. I have 8 left over. I'm going to add a decimal, bring it down. 15 goes into 85 times, which is... Seventy-five. Bring a five. Bring it down. Okay. Fifteen goes into fifty. It's going to be three times, which is forty-five. So you see, we keep repeating. Okay. So the first set, my mean or my average is going to be two point five three with the repeating bar over the three. I'm going to go ahead and line up my second set, and I'm going to go over here and find the average of it. So I have three. I have 4, I have 9, 8, 10, and 18, so you're going to see me group, so 7, 17, 28, so 14, 14 plus 8 is going to be 31. Oh, there you go. Okay, sorry guys. So my total is 42. <laughs> so we're going to take 42 and we're going to divide it by 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Again, 15. Oh, I guess I should have known that. So you pay attention to your labels. Um, 15 goes into 42 twice, which is 30. We have 12. Bring down, make it 120. And it goes 8, which is 120. So my average for my second set is going to be 2.8. Okay. So yeah. now it says, what is the difference between the ranges of the two sets of data? Remember, ranges is um, small, the largest minus the smallest. So when we look up here at data set one, our largest number is four, and our smallest number is one. So it's just 4 minus 1. So our range is 3. Set 2, we have a 6. We have 6s and we also have 1. So that's just going to be 6 minus 1. And so that's 5. Now, describe how the data is skewed or symmetric for each sample. So let's go back up here. Skewed just means it's on um, one side or the other. So when you're looking at these dot plots up here, and I'm just going to raise this just a little bit so we can see it really clearly. Um, when we're looking at the dot plots up here, um, we see that on the first row, we have no fives or sixes. So everything is skewed to the left. So, and then over here, this is very symmetrical. You can see we have three, two, three, two, two, three. 
So those are very symmetrical. Roll two and roll one is due to the left. So we're just going to go down here and write that. So the first set and then the second set is pretty symmetrical. So that means it's even all the way across our mirror image of each other. Um, what conclusions can be made about the first 15 rolls versus the second 15 rolls based on these dot plots? Well, one thing that was interesting is the first roll, um, the first set did not have any fours or fives, so it was very skewed to the left, to the lower numbers. When we think back to probability, um, the odds of that happening is pretty low, yeah. right? So first set... was skewed, which would be improbable. A L E improbable. A B L E. <laughs> That's why I don't teach English. And the second set was pretty even, which is what we would expect, right? Ooh. I hate it when it does that. Second set was, gosh, I can't spell it all today, can I? Was, is more even, and that's what we would expect when we're rolling dice. Okay, page two, example two. Twelve students in Mrs. Jackson's third period, sixth grade math class were chosen at random and their heights were measured in inches. The same process was completed for the eighth grade class. The heights of each class are shown below. Two dots plot, dot plots were created to display the data. These dot plots are displayed below. So we see our sixth grade, we see our eighth grade. Wait, sixth grade's on bottom, right? Eighth grade's on top. I wonder why they did it, where they did sixth and eighth and then eighth and sixth. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? But we can look at it real quickly. You know, we've already studied um, dot uh, box and whiskers or whatever they want us to call it now. And um, really quickly, you can look at it and you can see that our eighth grade class, they're all overall taller. And also the range of the eighth grade class is much greater. So just by looking at the medians, we can look at the medians um, really easily, which is why I like uh, box plots. We see the range here, and for our sixth grade, this is sixth grade, right? This is six. Mm -hmm. So we see the range. Our sixth graders are just above 61. We just follow that down, and our eighth graders are just above 63 inches. So overall, they're about two inches taller. So what is the difference between the medians? And let's just say eighth grade, about two inches taller. Okay, so our second one wants to know what is the difference between the ranges of the two sets. So before we can do that, we've got to find, before we can find the difference of the ranges, we've got to find the ranges themselves. So if we go back to our graph, let's look at eighth grade, they're on top. They are roughly going to be about 58, and these guys are roughly 72. So I'm going to say 72 minus my 58. You're going to get a range of 14. So I'm going to write that up here. If I come down and I look at my sixth graders, 58, and we're going to be about 67. So 67 minus 58 going to be about 9. So it wants to know the difference between these two. So I'm going to take my 14 and I'm going to subtract 9 and it's going to give me 5. So 5 is going to long again. So 5 is going to be the, the difference in the ranges between the two sets. 
Our next question, what is the difference between the interquartile range? So again, still dealing with range, but now we're not dealing with our whiskers per se, those extended lines that are out. We are now dealing with the interquartile range, so from one end of the box to the other. So we can look here and we can say that's about 66.5. And over here, it's going to be roughly 60. So 66.5 and 60. So we have an interquartile range of, I'm going to abbreviate, IQR is going to be roughly 6.5 for eighth grade. If we come over here for our six, I'm sure that was eighth grade, sorry. For sixth grade, we'll say about 64. Over here with my 59, so interquartile range, we subtract 64 minus 59 is going to be 5. So if it wants to know the difference between those two, we're going to take our 6.5 and I'm going to subtract 5 or 5.0, and we get a different uh, difference of 1.5 as the interquartile range. Okay. So the last one was, well, almost second to last, second to last, sorry guys. Describe how the data is skewed or symmetric for each. So let's come back up here and look at these guys. So like Ms. Hall said, overall we know that our eighth graders are larger. They seem to be, they seem to have, yeah, we're going to erase it so y'all can see a little bit better. Okay, so if we look at this piece over here, Okay, we see that they have a bigger whisker, okay, or a bigger stretch between your third quartile and your fourth quartile. So that means it's skewed to the right, right? I think we choose, yeah, we choose the largest. Guys, it's been a long week for us. So this is going to be skewed right because this is where a big chunk of the data, okay, can fall. If you look at our sixth graders, we also see that they are also skewed, but they are on the lower side of the scale. Okay, so let's come up here and let's look at our, I'm going to write our 8th graders, let me switch colors. So our 8th graders, we're going to say that it is skewed. going to be skewed towards the right, okay, so they have higher numbers. So the longer the whisker, the side that has the longer whisker is where it's skewed by. Okay. So that's why. Right. And then our sixth grade, so it is also skewed, right? However, they have smaller numbers involved. So both of these guys are skewed, but one has a higher set of numbers that it's involving, one has a lower set of numbers. So what conclusions can be made about the height of the 6th graders versus the height of the 8th graders based on these box plots? I would say we have a um, wider range of numbers for my 8th graders. Okay. And then obviously your sixth graders are still spread out, but they don't, their box plot doesn't cover near as much um, of the graph with the numbers. So we're going to say that there is a wider range for the eighth graders because they, they, their spectrum across the graph is a lot larger. Okay, so we know this is a longer video, um, but it's important that you know how to compare all pieces. So if you have any questions, make sure you come um, next class ready to ask. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.